Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your dear children. Thank you for the kingdom. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord, because you sent him to this world so he can draw us out of ourselves, out of where we are, into the kingdom, into the place we ought to be. And Lord, we pray this program of yours, this project of yours, and this plan of yours, bringing Christ to the cross of Calvary to die. Lord, we pray our hearts will receive it in a sober attitude in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray the grace, the love, and the strength, and the nature of God flowing through Calvary unto everyone that will believe. We pray it will flow to every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, Calvary will have an impact, an influence in every one of our lives. And that influence will take to the world waiting for us out there. And will influence our world for the grace, by the grace of God, in Jesus' name. The salt of grace, righteousness, purity, holiness, the nature of God, godliness, you implant in every one of our lives and saturate us with this salt of your righteousness in Jesus' name. We pray that our lives in everything we do, everything we say, every time we do anything in action, will bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. Bless your people here today. And Lord, we pray that blessing will so enrich our lives that it will turn us so much around and lead us to be a blessing to all the people. Be glorified in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, as you know. And we're in this series of studies, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, that he is what the Lord himself started and gave to his own people and he started to paint a picture and to draw the picture of the blessed man as you think about it you are asking who is the blessed man who is the favored man and who is the happy man were you to ask that question from the religious people of the day if you were to go to the pharisees and you were to say who are the blessed people they'll give you an answer if you were to go to the sadducees and you were to ask them who in your own estimation are the blessed people they'll give you a particular kind of answer their audience were the politicians of the day and if you were to ask them to you who are the blessed people you're going to have a different answer the zealots the people that were so zealous some of them nationalistic and in the understanding of who the favored one happy one blessed one is you would have a different answer to you from those zealous those political people who the blessed ones were but thank God, because Almighty God is sent His only begotten Son, and He sent Him to us, and He is the personification of the truth. Because He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. Yes, no man cometh to the Father in conversion in relationship except by me more than that no man cometh to the revelation of the father except by me no man cometh to the knowledge that resides in the almighty god except by me no man cometh to the light of the father god is light in him is no darkness at all no man cometh to the light the light of the father except by me all the answers that all those religious people and political people and tribal people and nationalistic people might give as to who is the blessed man the favored man 
the fortunate man, the happy man, the exalted man. All the answers they might give, all those answers will be wrong. And yet Jesus Christ, at the very beginning of his ministry, he begins to tell us in detail who the blessed people are. And you know when Jesus said that, he wanted you to take the word to yourself. And then as we see the picture, look at yourself in the mirror, in the mirror of the word of God. And look at the picture that the Almighty God through Jesus Christ is painting. And ask yourself, am I of the number? Have I been telling myself, I'm the blessed one? I'm the fortunate one? I am the favored one? I'm the exalted one? I'm the important one? I'm the indispensable one? Have I been telling myself, I am the blessed one, and yet I don't fit into the picture? What picture is he drawing? It's a composite picture. It's not just one verse of scripture. The totality of his revelation, the completeness of his revelation as to who the blessed man is, he tells us, look at it, verse 1, and see the multitudes. He went up into a mountain, and when he was said, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and he touched them. He opened his mouth, and he touched them. Disciples are learners. Disciples are people that understood we don't know each all. There is something still to learn. There's still something to be able to glean out of the watch of life. That's why they came to Jesus. Are there people here that do not come? You have read a little bit of the Bible. And you're a leader. And you come to a congress like this. And you pick and choose. You know, your attitude will reveal who you are. Your attitude to the word. Whether you receive the word or reject the word. Whether you soak in the word and search the word. Or you shun the word. Whether you feel there is something still there, in there for me. And if you are like that, you'll be preparing yourself. And without preparation, you will not be able to receive, accept, soak in, drink in the word. But the Lord said, he was going to teach them. And the disciples came unto him. And those disciples, I could, you can use your own imagination. Well, if you use your imagination and you pay attention, as the disciples were, and they were sitting before the Lord or standing before the Lord, do you know that our bodily posture actually says quite a lot? When you are learning, if you have been a teacher, and if you have been an observant teacher, you come to the class, then you want to teach. If you are teaching a subject, you can tell. Just look at the way those young people are, you can tell that one is paying attention. That one is absent-minded. That one is daydreaming. That one probably has a party to go and attend after this class and his, uh, his mind is in that party that one with the roving eyes there is like he's wondering as if he's daydreaming as if why are we here <laughs> what are we doing here in the posture of the people and the way they sit and the way they listen and the way they look can tell a lot a lot of stories about them those disciples was it that time that jesus began to take note that disciple there that one is Peter there. See the way he's paying attention. Look at that John there. That one will mend the net of the gospel. I can commit something to this fellow son. See the way he's drinking in the world. Well, see that time that Jesus already took note of these disciples and his disciples came to him and they were right there up front. 
and he could see them and as he was teaching them and teaching them he could see maybe somebody was nodding maybe somebody was their eyes were wide open saying what is this have i ever read this have i ever heard this maybe the fellow is leaning forward like this saying tell me more tell me more give me the bread of life maybe the fellow just opened the mouth like this watch maybe the fellow just put the hand somewhere that shows even my hands will not hinder me i want to hear this maybe the one maybe somebody looked at his friend when he had something with an a look of exclamation surprise did you ever hear that before and jesus was watching them no wonder of those disciples not of the multitude the people that learned and the people that received the word he began to say you come you come you come and then he chose 12 and he said i'm sending you out i see it in you while i was teaching you and while you were there i knew there's something planted inside you you are going somewhere and i'll lead you there and then the other people might have been wondering but i was there too i could have been one of the twelve maybe they were wondering disciples ah i understand now because every time when i sat behind that john when i sat behind that james every time when i had a chance of sitting behind that peter i, I see the way they lean forward i see the way they are all ears all attention maybe that's the reason why they have something i don't have and then they too now they began to now pay attention and then when it came to the time to choose the next set 70 they came in into the next group of 70 the way you listen and the way you learn and the way you pay attention will show what kind of a disciple you are and now he painted the picture he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you now verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth you are poor in spirit you mourn you are meek you hunger after righteousness you are filled with righteousness are you merciful you are pure in heart you are a peace lover a peacemaker are you endure persecution for righteousness sake are you still holding on to that righteousness i want to announce to you ye are the salt of the earth the people that received the grace of god and the people that have righteousness indwelling them ye are the salt of the earth and then he says but if the salt have lost its civil where we shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out to be trodden on the foot of men there's so much in that statement the statement of christ the main thrust of salt is distinctiveness salt is distinctively different from the scene on which it has great influence and we are the salt of the earth and there must be that distinction 
that difference between us and the world and the distinctive purpose or nature of salt is to influence is to change the flavor of what that salt comes in contact with and so our believers by nature we must be different by purpose we must be different and we have the ministry of penetrating the earth influencing the earth transforming others on earth that's what we're looking at the ministry of sanctified salty saints the ministry of sanctified salty saints i divide the message to three parts number one scriptural identification of symbolic salt scriptural identification of symbolic salt you see the salt jesus mentioned here he said ye are the salt of the earth that's symbolic that is salt symbolizes you represents you it's an emblem for you it's emblematic it's saying that you are the salt of the earth when you look at yourself look at salt and say salt symbolizes me salt represents me salt stands for me and i am to salt the earth season the earth influence the earth penetrate the earth immediately you begin to learn what you should look like immediately you begin to learn what's your purpose while you live on earth and the lord is telling us it's not enough to just be poor in spirit or just to mourn for the sins of the world do something about it you are a great influence in the world in which you live be an influence you are the salt of the earth it's not enough to be gentle and lowly and meek it's not enough to be full of righteousness and to be holy it's for a purpose be an influence in your earth it's not enough to be merciful let that mercy influence other people turn them around and change them it's not enough to be pure in heart you must be an influence in the world in which you live it's not enough to just quietly suffer persecution and say well i'm trying my best they're persecuting me i'm taking it i'm enduring it yes it's going to endure it do something and be an influence you are the salt of the earth point number one then scriptural identification of symbolic salt number two spiritual influence of salty saints the spiritual influence of salty saints number three sobering interpretation of savorless salt sobering interpretation of savorless salt the salt that has lost its savor point number one I want you to look at this in verse 13 the first two words ye are it says ye are the salt of the earth ye are the salt of the earth now was he talking to the whole multitude all the people there or was he talking to his own disciples was he talking to both sinners and saints was he talking to those who are born again and those who are not born again ye are before you can answer that question what you need to do is to go through the word of god in the new testament and find out every time the new testament says ye are ye are ye are and then you will know the identity of the people he was speaking to when he said ye are the salt of the earth look at these passages and find out ye are ye are in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 verse 3 now ye are you see that ye are clean through the word which has spoken unto you the identity or identification of the people that are the salt of the earth that have been washed 
and they have been washed by the word cleansed by the word that jesus christ spoke unto them and it says because of this you are in verse 5 i am the vine ye are the branches these are the people identify them branches in the vine they are attached to christ they are associated to christ and they stick to christ and the nature of christ gets into them as the nutrient of the tree gets into the branches ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing verse 19 if you are the world the world will love his soul but because ye are that's the those are the words ye are not of the world the identification of the people that are the salt of the earth they are not of the world they are people who have been called out of the world ye are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you ephesians chapter 2 ye are ye are in ephesians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 13 ephesians 2 verse 13 but now in christ jesus ye who were in the past who were afar off are made near by the blood of christ ye are made nigh by the blood of christ those are the people the people who have come out of sin they came out of their evil and now they have been brought near to the lord in verse 14 for he is a priest he is a peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself or twain one new man so making peace these are the people that have made peace with the lord and now they are made new in their heart in the inner man it tells us in verse 16 and that he might reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace unto you which were in the past afar off and to them which were in the past night for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father now therefore ye are you notice that now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god ye are the salt of the earth ye are no more strangers ye are no more foreigners ye are now citizens with the saints and of the household of god you see that the people that we identify as the salt of the earth they are the people that have come to make peace with god they are reconciled with god they have a change of life a change of nature galatians chapter 4 verse 6 galatians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 6 in galatians chapter 4 verse 6 remember what we're searching for ye are ye are in galatians chapter 4 verse 6 and because ye are sons ye are salt ye are sons because ye are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father and then we're told in first corinthians chapter 3 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 verse 17 know ye not that ye are the temple of god these are the people you see when jesus said ye are the salt of the earth now it's not enough to just say okay everybody that was speaking to they were the salt of the earth you have the identification marks and then you search the scriptures and you find out ye are ye are ye are if you are all this then ye are the salt of the earth ye are the salt of the earth because it says don't you know you are the temple of god and the, and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple ye are those that's the salt 
the people that are holy you understand that you are passed through verses 3 to 12 and having experienced all the experiences of verses 3 to 12 now ye are the salt of the earth you are the temple of god the spirit of god dwelleth abideth in you in the first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 and such were some of you but ye are washed salt and but ye are sanctified salt but ye are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god in verse 20 verse, why don't we read from verse 19 from verse 19 and then we read verse 20 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own the people that have come out of themselves the people that have come out of their natural bitterness and resistance against the truth ye are not of yourself self is crushed and self is cancelled and now you give yourself to god you abandon yourself in the hand of the lord and you have a ministry the ministry to influence the world in which you live you are not of yourself and now it says in verse 20 about ye are bought with a price the people who have been bought redeemed purchased by the blood of the lamb ye are ye are the salt of the earth ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's it tells us in second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and what agreement has the temple of god with idols for ye are for ye are now ye are in matthew will not contradict ye are in john ye are in john will not contradict ye are in ephesians it's the same word of god there is unity in the word of god they do not contradict one another ye are in ephesians will not contradict ye are in first corinthians if matthew recommends somebody as acceptable and then first corinthians disqualifies that person as acceptable that he is not acceptable anymore there will be contradiction but the same people recommended by matthew chapter 5 those same people are recommended by john and by first corinthians and by second corinthians and by ephesians the same set of people ye are and if somebody says ye are salt that's symbolic you have to find other scriptures to be able to understand the identity the identifying mark of those people we're talking about in matthew otherwise anybody can just claim i'm part of the salt because it's symbolic it's like a parable and without comparing scripture with scripture we might deceive ourselves that's why it says now in second corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 what agreement has the temple of god with idols for ye are the temple of the living god as god has said i will dwell in them and walk in them i will be their god and they shall be my people those people of god who have come out of the world they are the people referred to as the salt of the earth wherefore come out from among them and be separate says the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters says the lord almighty we're looking at first peter first peter chapter two ye are in first peter chapter two reading from verse nine but ye are a chosen generation ye are salt yes ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light out of darkness into his marvelous light that's why you'll find in verse 14 of matthew chapter 5 ye are the light of the world the same thing you are salt you are light you are light because you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past 
were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy first John chapter 4 verse 4 first John chapter 4 verse 4 ye are of God little children ye are of God little children and overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world that's why it says here the light of here the light of the world here are the salt of the earth because the greater one the mightier one and the transformer and the one that transforms every life he abides within you and because of that ye are the light of the world and ye are the salt of the earth romans chapter one romans chapter one i'm reading from verse five Romans chapter 1 verse 5 By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom ye are also called of Christ Jesus You see you change the age No that's grammar that's English among whom are ye also you know sometimes when you want to emphasize a particular thing you might change the order of the words ye are among whom ye are among whom are ye in are ye also the cult of jesus christ to all that be in rome beloved of god called to be saved that's the salt you are called of Christ Jesus called to be what called to do what called to express what called to manifest what called in what says verse 7 to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saved grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ identified these are Christ converts ye are they are Christ's disciples ye are they are Christ's followers ye are they are the people that are called out of the world and they were cleansed humble meek righteous merciful pure peace loving peacemaking persecuted consecrated children of God citizens of the kingdom ye are I pray you'll be among the number point number two the spiritual influence of salty saves the spiritual influence of salty saves let's come back to chapter 5 verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth I, I, I see it ever occurred to you that in the delivery of the message of Christ it would always take something that everybody can think about everybody can identify with everybody can understand and then he will make use of that in teaching the word of the kingdom again let's reason together here is the lord jesus christ and he came to the world and from all eternity he had been with the father and with the holy ghost and they have communicated and interacted together at their level and then they have you know the altars in heaven and the stars and the sun and a great worship and the paved ground on which the feet of the almighty god rest you read that in revelation and yet jesus christ came and he saw multitudes and they had never seen any of those things in heaven and so when he wanted to preach to them he did not use symbols he did not use ideas or objects that only those who have been in heaven can understand what i'm saying is he didn't speak above their head not only that because you know that jesus christ is the personification of all knowledge uh, we, we, know, we have a glimpse of that that jesus christ at the age of 12 he was at the temple when he got to the temple his mother and uh, joseph were there 
after they finished everything they went back you know this story and they sat down what surprised those priests is that the level at which Christ was speaking to them they had never seen this before they might be thinking what kind of child is this because they didn't know him as Christ at that time but the questions he was asking them and the deep things of the revelation that he was asking them how about this how about this how about... it was too deep and now he came to the public the multitude the people his disciples and he said ye are the salt of the earth and all those deep deep things of heaven he could have spoken about no and all the deep knowledge of religion theology he could have spoken to all those multitudes no why they wouldn't understand he came from heaven he came to earth and what was common to everybody any village you go any city you go salt is there and everybody knows what salt is and then he made use of what they know to tell them of what they don't know what am i telling you you know some people go to seminary and it's all right we have ibtc that's international bible training center now we have the centers in various places and then you go in there maybe you take introduction to greek or you take the new testament survey and all these in the testament period of a matthew to malachi to matthew and the period of the maccabees and all the time how the pharisees developed and every all those deep deep things and then you now come out of the seminary as you come out of the seminary you have a crowd before you and the crowd before you all they know that there's a sheet of paper in between malachi and matthew that's all they know and then in that sheet of paper in between malachi and matthew it writes the new testament of our lord jesus christ that's all they know and then you come now and then you are preaching and because you just came from seminary and then you turn everything into a cemetery and then you begin to explain and explain and explain all the period in the first century after malachi and the second century and the third century and the first century in fact when it was coming at the time do you know the pharisees how they came up those pharisees they were the people the separatists and then you go into all this history and all and you're enjoying yourself because you came from seminary you've lost your crowd jesus didn't talk about all those things that will confuse the people he just said ye are the salt of the earth uh -uh. salt is white am i white wash me i shall be whiter than snow that's all we need that's all we need salt is sweet am i bitter ye are the salt of the earth salt is different am i like the rest of the people am i different salt never loses its value when you keep it very well and you keep it you don't let it have contamination contact with dust or sand am i keeping myself in the grace of god that's all we need you see jesus christ how he taught all those vocabularies jaw-breaking vocabularies that nobody will understand drop them all those theological air splitting that you know the the critics that they delight in you read the bible ye are the salt of the earth this word ye in the greek is this and it is in the plural who needs all that show us the bible and tell us what it means to be salt of the earth we're learning from christ is a great teacher and is a master teacher now this second point the spiritual influence of salty saints look at that verse 13 again ye are the salt of the earth what kind of influence is that what kind of influence does salt have let's look at second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 we're reading from verse 19 and the men of the city said unto elisha behold i pray thee the situation of this city is pleasant as my lord seeth but the water is not and the ground barren and he said bring me a new cruise and put salt therein and they brought it to him and he went forth 
unto the spring of waters and cast the salt in there and said thus says the lord i have healed these waters by casting the salt there there shall not be from thence any more death or barren land so the waters were healed unto this day according to the scene of elisha which is paid this is salt in that whole land the water was bad and who can do without drinking water they had to drink water as they were drinking the water it was poisonous to them and then the land was barren they needed a supernatural influence and they needed something that would turn everything around and change death to life and change sickness to health and change barrenness to fertility and because of that they came to the prophet of god they said look at this land and you will see that this land is barren and because of the barrenness of the land we need something we need a divine intervention and so he said go and bring a new cruise and put salt inside it and he brought the salt unto him and then he poured it to the very spring and to the very source and to the very origin of the waters there and then that water was healed and there was no more death there was no more barrenness and that was their testimony and jesus said ye are the salt of the earth there's so much barrenness around you there's so much bitterness around you there's so much death spiritual death around you and you are the salt of the of their lives i'm sending you out to be a life giving a life transforming influence in the lives of the people around you are you like that what influence do you have on people what influence do you have on the community in one of um, the local governments not too far away we established the church the palais and um, you know they labored and labored and labored but the people will not come until somebody that was interested in evangelism uh, you know knocking on doors knocking on doors and say come now come to church our church is this our church is that we'll pray with you we'll lead you into life that has meaning and the people one and all they said you have just come to this place see the pastor you put there you see his wife his wife fights with everybody in this place except you don't have contact with her we cannot come if you are going to change us let the pastor's family have a change and then we eventually found out sent people there found out about that local church and we discovered it was exactly like that if you are going to be salt you will have a good influence your life your influence the impact of your behavior in society will turn death to life and will turn bitterness to sweet and will turn what is evil in that community a corruption the decay there will turn into life and something very sound that's the influence of salt we're told in colossians chapter 4 colossians chapter 4 reading from verse 5 and verse 6 colossians 4 5 and 6 walk in wisdom toward them that are without you see if you are going to influence people they must see the difference between you and them and you are not going to have any influence when people see you when people interact with you have you noticed those people of the world they are very slow when they meet a stranger when they meet somebody they are not familiar with and uh, they might greet you good morning good afternoon and then say a few things those who are cultured among them refined among them, intelligent among them and they will not talk much and then they just maybe they might push you forward and allow you to talk and then you say you are a christian and you cannot moderate your words 
and then somebody you are meeting for the first time you talk and talk and talk and talk and immediately he can size you up and when you are talking to that unbeliever and he says yes i've heard that before but you know actually that's not the full story when the sinner begins to correct you actually that's not the full story it is actually this or this or that and then you begin you have to say oh i am sorry once you say i am sorry you put yourself under him he is above you you cannot influence him because already you have spoken so much and you have talked so much about what you don't know that the sinner you are trying to witness to you are trying to talk to he now correct and he makes it very clear and his correction is very plain very clear that you have to say oh, i'm sorry i didn't know it was like that all right if you say you are sorry to him you didn't know it was like that he knows what you don't know he rates himself above you you've lost your ministry with him you lost your influence with him so when, when you meet the people outside and it says here, you walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Let your speech be always with grace. Ask yourself. Well, you, let's say, for example, you are here now. As you are here, ask yourself. What influence do you want to have while you are here now? As you come to me, for example, let's say you come to me. What influence do you want to have on me? You can have an influence on me. A quiet spirit, a lowly spirit, a well-composed, calm person, a person that has the grace of God, a person that shows that Christ makes a difference in somebody's life, a thoughtful person, an intelligent person that after you have gone the aura the air the atmosphere that you leave behind even though another person comes to see me i'm thinking about that person that person has a lot of christ a lot of grace in his life i wonder what that person is doing in the church i wonder what position he has in the church that fellow is a mighty influence if that fellow can influence me his pastor like that i wonder what kind of influence is having on the people outside call that person back for me i want to know him and then they call him i say my brother what's your name he says this is my name are you here in nigeria yes sir from which state are you i'm from this particular state what do you do there i am a coordinator are you a, you're a coordinator there since when What's your plan in life? What's your goal? What do you want to do for the Lord? And then we discuss together. I say, take this paper. Write your name. Write your telephone number. And then if they, your state of affairs, write his name there. I want to know more about you. That's influence. The fellow has an influence that you just know. When he came in and when he spoke to you, you just felt, I'll not let that person go. I need to know more about him. But if you just live your life and you don't understand, that you ought to have a mighty influence on people around you and that's a wonderful thing wonderful thing when you have an influence like that and so that's why jesus said yeah the salt of the earth let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man now for example you know, both the negative and bad influence actually remain with us. Both negative and bad influence, they remain with us. What I mean is, somebody comes across your path. Like, you know, you go to a particular stage, maybe you traveled out of your station, out of the place you normally are. And then you say, well, this Sunday I need to go on. You know attend church deeper life church in a particular place and then as you come you are not familiar with their building you're not familiar with their people they just come in and then somebody meets you 
he looks like a stranger here yes i am this is my first time coming to this local church which church do you go i go to deeper life but i'm not from this city oh wonderful please come and sit down here and then you sit down you don't have songbook with you it goes and it says you can use this songbook i'll get it after the service and then uh, you know you sit down and then if you're going to the toilet our toilet is you know over there and uh, after the service then he says how did you enjoy the service oh this was wonderful and uh, would you like to see our pastor he might you know like to just know you i know you are not in our city here but our pastor may want to talk to you uh, yes i'd like to see him and then then you are wondering this man is so polite this man this is this is real a good representation of deeper life they say something and then he takes you to the pastor he says uh, pastor uh, this uh, my friend is you know attending our church for the first time and i just think that you'd like to know him and then the pastor too says uh, you know shakes your hand how are you my brother are you deeper life yes i am where are you coming from uh, this is where i am when were you born again it was at the crusade of uh, me uh, 2005 the one they did uh, from port Harcourt and then showed it to all of us that's why you were converted praise the lord i thank god for you have you been baptized in water yes i was thank you very much sit down here and then it may be that you know he has some tracks or whatever and then he gives him are you going to spend this afternoon well i'm going back to my station going back to your station where is that then far away when will you get back home about another another three four hours are you going to take lunch well when i get home three hours after here sit down sister so and so come we have this a friend coming from you know this other place please uh, give him a lunch there and then he takes lunch after taking the lunch and he drinks the cold water then you say thank you very much god bless you you can go that you make an impact and influence in the life of that man he will never forget any other deeper life he goes is going to be comparing that deeper life with this deeper life he attended influence but we're thoughtless we don't think about it that ye are the salt of the earth and that you ought to have an impact and influence in the lives of people but you go to a church and it's the first time and you're also a member of deeper life or maybe you go to have marriage or introduction in that stage because the person you want to get married to is living in that stage and we're giving letter maybe you're coming from lagos we're giving letter to the state overseer there region overseer there and then uh, you know the fellow appears in the church deeper life and he says i'm coming from lagos mm -hmm. and uh, you know i have a letter from lagos yes I need to see the pastor. The pastor doesn't see everybody every time. You have to come at the right time. Are you fighting? Have you met him before? But I have this letter from the GS. Yes, I told you. That he doesn't see people every day. Wait until, until Wednesday. But I have only one day off for my place. So if you want to marry, you ought to take more than one day off. If you know marriage is important you will know to take permission and we are not going to change your program here because you are not intelligent enough to take all the days you need and then the fellow is wondering i'm in hot soup in this place this is not the kind of deeper life i know and then eventually he waits until that wednesday and they put the names of the people that want to see the pastor and this fellow coming from lagos they don't put his name and he went to the fellow and said my brother you remember me i'm the one that came the other day you told me to wait until yes wait 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 learn patience and there you are you are waiting and the pastor is about to close and they have not told the pastor that this person came eventually by the time they allow that man to see the pastor the pastor is tired and he's in a hurry and then he comes to the he comes near the door and the fellow is coming in and he will not sit down he stands there near the door he holds the door like this and says okay they say you are from lagos and holding the door what do you have to say i have a letter from lagos what are they saying uh, marriage okay so when married are you from this area yes sir i'm from there uh -huh. now you want to get married you want to see us there 
All the time you have been coming to the village here, you did not think about pastor. This church building we're building here. You people, you stay in Lagos. Now, you want to marry? Here we are now. I'm telling you a true story. <laughs> and eventually, when they now say, okay, they have written everything down, go back, we'll contact you. For another six months, they have not even called that sister in that place. What kind of influence is that? Yeah, the salt of the earth make the lives of other people sweet. That when they think about you, when they remember you, they will know that brother, he was such in my life. It turned my bitterness to joy and turned my sorrow into happiness. Let your speech be always seasoned with grace and salt that she may know how you ought to attend, how you ought to answer, how you ought to respond to every man. When looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, First Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 7. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God's word is spread abroad. So that we need not speak anything. Your faith towards God is spread abroad. What a great great influence that's the kind of influence we need and god will give it to us in first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 1 likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives that the, the unbelieving husbands will be won into the gospel by the conversation the lifestyle of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear that's not slavish fear that's reverential fear honoring fear just respecting your husband and that kind of influence is what will help us to be able to actually know that we are salt in the earth now if you look at Ruth chapter 1 as I read this to you I don't want you to forget the normal sour relationship between mothers-in-law and their daughters-in-law generally there is sour relationship bad relationship bitter relationship bitter experiences between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law and it's general almost everywhere but if you're a Christian, a Christian mother-in-law right now, because uh, the church is now, we have, you know, the church now has been here, that's deeper life, for more than 30 years. And uh, those who got married, uh, maybe about uh, 40 years ago, before they even came to deeper life, right now their children are getting married. Even some of the people that married in the church, like about 30, 25 years ago, their daughters and sons are now preparing to get married. And generally, generally, the, the, the relationship between the mother-in-law, the, the father-in-law, a father-in-law don't have too much time to be asking unnecessary questions from their daughters-in-law or sons-in-law. They don't have time for that. It's generally the mothers. And, you know, if you don't understand, you are sold in the earth. Your daughter has gotten married. And then your daughter comes back to you to tell you as a mother, this is how my husband is doing, this is how my husband is doing. You ask yourself, before you respond to what your daughter is telling you about her husband, what kind of influence do I want to have on the husband of my daughter? You are the salt of the earth. Or it may be that your son is the one that married and you are the mother to your son now the son is married and then you when you meet your son you are asking questions from your son and as you are talking to your son how about this how about this how about that your son being your son 
your boy all the same although he's married he's asking you questions what kind of mother-in-law are you going to be to the daughter that is to the wife of your son are you going to take all those six on you and say what that's the way that woman is doing call her for me and then you call her and the way you call her is not with the voice of christ not with the voice of a dove sharp it's like already everything your son said about the wife about your daughter-in-law you believe everything already and you are ready to nail this crucify this daughter-in-law come here that's my son and i took care of that son and if you are going to enjoy that marriage you take care of that son because that son tender precious dear in our family we took real real care of him and if you don't match the care we took of him you're going to lose the marriage i'm telling you and the daughter-in-law is wondering look at mama look at what she's saying what kind of influence does mama want to have upon on me ruth chapter one ruth chapter one and see the they see the influence of Naomi on her daughter-in-law, on Ruth. This is the salt we're talking about. You are the influence, the salt of the earth. He tells us in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Let me ask you. I pray your son will never will not die. Give me a good amen. amen. But you see, Ruth had lost the husband. And she could have said, What am I doing in this family anymore? But the attachment, the affection between Ruth and the mother-in-law was so much. That Ruth could not think of any other place to go and live. And when the mother-in-law said, I release you from all my heart. Because what can I say? If I should say I have hope and I will get married tonight and deliver a son. Are you going to wait to marry that a son? Well, it grieves me because of you. Because of the calamity that happened to me, I release you, you can go. And Ruth said, no, I will not go. What a great influence. Do you have an influence like that? Maybe you are not a mother-in-law. But you are teaching people, maybe mechanic or carpentry or something. And then people come to work with you. And you have such a great influence on them. There's so much attachment and there's so much affection. And then you say, ah, my uh, son... You don't call him servant because you have developed intimacy relationship and then you say the time of your freedom is near now so i will release you i'll give you some capital you'll go and start on your own and then you have such a mighty influence on this young man that he says no i will even if i am free that now i get my liberty i will be working with you you are my father i cannot leave you what a great influence but for somebody walking with a believer to be calculating months and weeks and days and says uh, it remains three months now god give me grace to finish this three months and then two weeks now god the day i'm free from this sanctified christian that day i will jump for joy when you are running from a sanctified man that sanctification is coming from another it's coming from the left hand side not coming from the right hand side but you know when you have somebody that you are working with and the fellow said no i don't want to leave yes i've got my freedom i'm going to stay here with you and i'm going to build up this business with you that's influence and that's what the lord is calling to ye are the salt of the earth i pray it will happen in your life the influence of salt lies in its difference and we must be unspotted from the world salt preserves things from decay we are to preserve our world from moral decay and corruption as salt penetrates so are believers to penetrate their world and influence the world with new life 
assault, flavors, whatever it comes in contact with. So the flavor of Christ in us should make all the thirsty for God and thirsty for godliness. Assault is irrepressible. What I mean by that is, once you apply salt to anything, it's irrepressible. That is, it, it, the influence will just cannot be stopped. So, we must spread real salt everywhere and our ministry will become unstoppable. Your ministry will be unstoppable in Jesus' name. I come to point number three. Sobering interpretation of savorless salt. We come to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt had lost its savour, where we shall it be salted? If the salt have lost its savour, where we shall it, be shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out. Cast out. Cast out and trodden on the foot of men. Look at those words, cast out, after losing its saltiness, or losing its savor. Look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 34 and verse 35. Luke 14, 34, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned it is neither fit for the land nor yet for the donkey but men cast it out men cast it out he that has ears to hear let him hear first kings chapter 9 savorless salt cast out first kings chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 but if ye shall at all turn from following me, salt losing its savor, ye and your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve all thy gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed, for my name dedicated for my name i will cast out cast out civil assault cast out disobedient israel cast out of my sight and israel shall be a proverb and by word among all people second kings chapter 17 cast out civil assault cast out Simple Christian cast out, graceless church man cast out, the salt that lost its favor, its savor cast out. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 17. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hands of the spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Savorless salt cast out. What does that mean? They're rejected and they do not belong to the Lord anymore. Jeremiah chapter 7. In Jeremiah chapter 7, reading from verse 8. Jeremiah 7 verse 8 Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after all the gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name and say we're delivered to do all these abominations 
is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes behold i even i i have seen it says the lord but go now go ye now unto my place which was in shiloh where i set my name at the falls and see what i did to it for the wickedness of my people israel and now because ye have done all these works says the lord i speak unto you rising up early and speaking but ye had not i called you but ye answered not therefore will i do unto this house which is called by my name wherein ye trust and unto the place which i gave to you and to your fathers as i have done to shiloh and i will cast you out of my sight savorless salt graceless christian sinning christian committing adultery committing murder stealing and doing abominable things in the sight of god and there, there are people that will say once in grace always in grace no we know you have grace when you're living right if you become graceless savorless without righteousness without holiness it says the savorless salt will be cast out and here god said verse 15 and i will cast you out of my sight as i have cast out all your brethren even the whole seed of ephraim ezekiel chapter 28 in ezekiel chapter 28 we're reading from verse 14 this is even talking about lucifer the morning star that had that was in the presence of god originally but savorless salt will be cast out graceless christian sinless sinning church goer will be cast out ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14 that was the anointed cherub that covereth and i have said this so that was upon the holy mountain of god thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise they are filled the midst of thee were violence and thou was seen therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of god i will destroy thee o covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire cast out even from heaven you see when a christian takes things for granted and then you are not preserving the saltiness the grace the strength of character the righteousness and the holiness if the salt loses its savor is cast out john chapter 12 verse 31 john chapter 12 verse 31 now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out you know the word cast out that has just one meaning rejected separated from the almighty god separated from the place you have been then he tells us matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 verse 11 and verse 12 matthew 8 verse 11 and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with abraham and isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out you see that those jews yes they had the law and they had the old covenant but they were not walking in the covenant in the precepts and the principles and the practices of the covenant and it says the children of the kingdom referring to the jews shall be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears in matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 47 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto an edge 
that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was fully drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels but cast the bad away so shall it be at the end of the world the angel shall come forth and save us separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth cast out the civil assault the sinning christian the graceless church member that has lost the virtue the grace the sweetness of salt will eventually be cast out into the outer darkness chapter 22 of matthew matthew chapter 22 verse 13 then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth matthew chapter 25 you'll wonder what kind of bible all these people who are preaching eternal security you wonder what kind of bible they are reading and you wonder where they're getting their ideas that once you have been saved you are born again even if you go back to permanent adultery permanent blasphemy sacrilege even if you speak in the face of the almighty god you are saved and you are forever saved you wonder where they get that when jesus christ himself our lord and savior said if the salt loses its savor is cast out and men trample upon them and then apart from just saying civil assault is cast out it then goes from passage to passage telling us that that fellow that goes back into sin and into wickedness like other people will be cast out into outer darkness there's nothing like security for the sinning church member matthew chapter 25 verse 30 matthew 25 verse 30 cast ye out cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 6 if a man abide not in me very clear yes christ he is a savior he is the lord himself if a man abides not in me he might remain in the church he might remain a worker in courts but sin has entered in immorality has entered in lying deception has entered in untruth falsehood has entered in if a man abide not in me you may still be working you may even still be preaching and you may even still be singing or playing musical instruments you may be ushering or you may be doing security work you may be in any area of the work in the church and then you go into secret scene and we can tell because when you come you'll be trying to use some force to cower your pastors that he is to conquer them so they will not have mouth to talk and if your sin is challenged then you begin to do this and that instead of repenting and finding yourself out of the net of the cage where you are if you remain a worker in the church a preacher in the church and you remain in that scene if you die in that condition you go to hell you know it's you know in the church here yeah, anybody who knows uh, uh, when i preach i preach by inspiration i called um, one of our state of overseers national overseers yesterday and i said come i'm removing you from your country and i'm bringing you to nigeria and i'm taking you to such and such a stage 
while the preaching was going on here, I needed to, you know, handle those admissive, admissive things. I called the church secretary and I said, this brother is now in Nigeria. He's in this stage. Then, the church secretary, I said, go and call me somebody. The church secretary went out and to call that person. Then, the uh, brother to, he said, sir, this blows my, I'm using my words, blows my mind. He said, August or September, I wrote it down. It was in the night. I had the voice. You are leaving this place. You are going to this particular stage. And then I woke up. I called my wife. I said, this is unbelievable. And I don't think it can ever happen. Because that stage, a state overseer there. And they are doing fine there. And the state overseer there is much, much older, much experienced than myself. There is no way. This can be. But let me just tell you. God told me. And then he wrote it down. And then yesterday I called him, I said, you are living where you are, you are going to such and such a place. When I talk, I don't just talk. If you are observant, yesterday in the morning, I put two moderators here. And I told them, you will do this, the next you will do this. Then I came to preach. And as I was preaching and preaching and preaching, then I mentioned something. And I described and I said, you know, when this happens and this happens and this happens and when I finish my, uh, all the thing I wanted to say, making my illustration, I then turned back, I called him, I said, now, that's how I finished the preaching, you will, he said, sir, I cannot do that now, I need to see you. I said, all right. Then the singing, everything was going on, then we went to my office there, that thing you said, when you are preaching, I am guilty. And I thought I had settled it. I thought since, you know, it happened that time, and since, you know, it wasn't in Lagos, yeah, it's, you know, in another place. And since this, I thought everything was settled. But when you said it this morning, the yoke and the heaviness and the burden and the guilt came all over me again. You know, when I talk, you know, sometimes you are sitting down there, you say, why is this pastor talking like this? Why is he preaching like this? It's by revelation. Even if I didn't tell you, but it's by revelation. And so you need to understand that if you are just holding on to the work and you are trying to use bold face, the bold face doesn't stop us from telling you the truth that the savorless salt will be cast out except you repent. If a man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. What's my joy? My joy is that you will get to heaven. Yeah. And you will get to heaven. But if I didn't tell you the truth, and you covered up those things, and you're just ministering, and just preaching, and just singing, and just doing this and that, and there's no pastor that has the boldness to tell you the truth, how will I be able to get you to heaven? I will be there, and you will be there. Yeah. And if there is any time to wash, if there is any time to prepare, if there is any time to repent, if there is any time to make up our lives and to say, yes, Lord, I'm naked before you. Here am I. I want to do the will of God. I want to get to heaven. If that's you I'm talking about, you can stand up and tell the Lord, I want to make it. I want to make it. I don't want anything. I don't want this uh, thing they call church work, church ministry, church service to blindfold me. And say, I'm going to heaven when I'm not going anywhere. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to get to heaven. Oh Lord, here I am. I stretch myself before your altar. And I want a change, a transformation in my life. The Lord will do it. I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. I just thank God. Third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to take out the loan. I just thank God for all his provision. I just Praise 